thinking about talking at OSCON, O'Reilly Open Source Convention this year, so um, I need a video to submit for, with my proposal, mm -hmm. which I don't have any videos of me talking yet, and this is last spider Thursday before the uh, deadline to submit, which is February 4th. Um, so I figured it'd be a good chance to share some of the, my recent adventures with uh, Fourier and such. Um, so it's very, this is going to be very half-baked. I didn't plan on doing this until yesterday. Does that mean that we should keep the snark and sarcasm to a minimum? Well, it's open season. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it's, it'll probably be some hiccups. Anyway, um, can you make that bigger? Um, no, that's well, that's not actually important. Those, those are actually my private notes. You're not supposed to know where they oh, are. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I, I started into this, into looking at Fourier transforms. Um, what got me started in it is last, uh, this past Thanksgiving, over the break, I just decided I wanted, I was curious about music theory. Uh, I didn't know anything about it, and it always annoyed me, because a lot of stuff didn't seem to make sense. Um, so I, w I wanted to look into music theory. I did that for a few days over the break. And, you know, I was trying to understand it in terms of mathematics because, you know, it seems like music is this universal thing and, you know, it should be explainable. You know, it shouldn't be just people giving their opinions. There should be something universal and mathematical behind it. So I looked into that a lot. Uh, I used programming <coughs> Python to uh, help me understand, program some of these, some of the musical concepts. And that gave me a better understanding of uh, music. I could probably give a whole different talk on uh, music and math, which is really, really interesting. Uh, anyway, I pretty quickly figured out that um, if I want to understand music and sound more general, more generally, then uh, Fourier analysis would be a big help in that. Um, Fourier. Uh, who all here knows what Fourier analysis, Fourier transforms are? Can you just raise your hand? Just, time ago. Okay. So, um, the basic, um, basically Fourier, um, there's a thing called Fourier transform, which um, this guy named uh, French mathematician Fourier discovered that any periodic complex wave can be represented as the sum of a bunch of simple waves, so sine and cosine waves. So any periodic wave can be represented as that. Um, so that's what Fourier transform does. And in particular, um, a Fourier transform um, can convert a, a periodic wave, which is you know its time domain, into frequency domain. So basically, a Fourier transform <laughs> breaks down a wave into its component frequency. So, like, if you see, for instance, uh, you know, spectrum analyzers, uh, music visualization stuff, where you see, like, the bass is bigger in this part of the song, or the treble in this part. Well, I'm assuming they're using Fourier transforms to determine those component frequencies of the music. Um, and uh, it's been a really interesting Fourier analysis. Um, you know, it deals with waves, gives you this different view of waves. And I've been amazed. It's just Amazing where all this comes into play at. Um, the most famous or maybe the most obvious example is uh, like sound. Obviously, it's waves. Uh, you know, light is also also deals with waves. Um, quantum mechanics. I found you know you know there's, there's this particle wave duality to quantum particles, and then Fourier analysis can be useful in understanding those systems as well. Um, but a, a, a simple example of how it's used is uh, compression. So like MP3s, for instance, you know, you can, they basically can use a Fourier transform to compress music. Um, so it's super useful. Um, I, I want to go ahead and show you a little bit of the, the simple math behind it um, before I talk even farther so it's easier to understand. Um, a little uh, little break from the Fourier stuff. I'm going to be using um, Python to demonstrate some of this stuff, of course. I'm sure you guys probably guessed. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to use this thing called uh, IPython. Uh, and it, it has this mode called Notebook, which basically launches a web server on your computer. And it's, it's a web app, which 
she then attaches. We got somebody on the phone. I don't know if you want to. Who's on the phone? Do you want us to put, share a live meeting? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, who's there? GP. Oh, hey, GP. Do you want to do a live meeting or actually? Uh, I am on the live meeting, but I don't see anything shared. I'll tell you what, let's just try Skype because live meeting can be kind of finicky on the map. Um, let me try to Skype you and just share my screen, okay? Let me go back to your command phone. Your dashboard and my phone is just the font size on my two. Nothing else is going to be shown out there. The plus sign. Huh? I don't want to use it. Oh, oh he's yeah, on call, right? Yeah. He's on the call. And the plus sign is your thing. Yeah, the plus sign. Next to the mute. Hold on. Have patience. Okay, I am now. Can you see? It? It's probably pretty big. Um, okay, so anyway, I'm going to be using uh, this thing called IPython Notebook to give you guys some visualizations and, and that kind of stuff. And it, it, I recently discovered this uh, IPython Notebook. It's really cool. Uh, you know, it's a web server thing, and it has, uh, you know, you can do Python. Oh, let me show you. I lost the voice. I sound like a you now. You lost what? Unmute. He might have hung up on the bridge. Hey, GP, you lost what? Uh, he hung up the bridge. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so you, you can just listen to us through this. Do you need to hang up the phone there? Do you want the Skype speaker? He can't hear you. He'll be able to hear me. Yeah. Hey, GP, can you hear me fine now? There you go. Hey, GP? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I can hear you. Okay, and you can, can you see my screen still? Yep. Great, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, the only way... Basically, the SciPython notebook, it just looks in your current folder, and that's where it gets all of these files from. For each short as an individual file. Um, and so, for example, open this up. It's really nice for just doing uh, you know, visualization and graphing. There, it, it also utilizes other Python libraries, such as uh, Matplotlib, which is this Python uh, plotting platform, and uh, NumPy, which is a computa uh, you know, numerical computation library for Python. So I mean, you can see it's really basic, uh, really easy to use. Um, just plotting a few sinusoidal waves here. Kill me. Can you zoom, you in, zoom in a lot? Can I zoom in a lot? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, great. Okay, so um, you know, if I change one of these, for instance, I can zoom on. You can see it change. <coughs> So that's, that's kind of the platform. It's really nice. Easy to use. You can, it's really interesting. You can delete cells, um, add cells. It's, it's kind of this weird thing between like Excel, Excel and, and a Python REPL. It, it, it's interesting. Um, it seems really useful though to me. So, um, so that's what we're going to be using to show some of this stuff. So anyway, back to Fourier. Uh, Fourier kind of all begins with this uh, thing called the Fourier series, which is um, this uh, representation of all the way. It, it's a series which can represent any wave. Uh, and it looks like this. So, um, you know, I could make it shorter with the summation, of course. But it's basically just a bunch of, uh, and it's a, a convolution of a bunch of cosine and sine waves. And then they each have these uh, coefficients, A for cosine, B for sine. Those are called Fourier coefficients. Mm -hmm. And those are what, uh, that's what basically 
is the output of the Fourier transform, is those coefficients. Um, and so you can imagine, um, imagine for music compression, for instance, you're basically just getting a bunch of these coefficients. And that's how Fourier transforms can be used to compress, say, music, or many other things. So that, that's, that's the basis of, of, of all this stuff. So, you know, I wrote a little, uh, I wrote a little 